after uh, collecting the data the next step is um, identifying the distribution with data so this identifying the distribution uh, discuss methods for selecting families of input distribution when data are available and uh, believed to be independent and identically distributed and uh, the specific distribution within a family is specified by uh, estimating its uh, parameters so in this we'll be discussing about uh, the histograms then selecting the family of distribution and quantile to quantile plots where these plots are considered to be always independent and identically distributed um, coming to these histograms uh, these histograms are frequency distribution and is useful in determining the shape of, shape of the distribution it is always considered as um, a frequency distribution the number of uh, 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 before we take up um, now this histograms is constructed as follows uh, divide the range of uh, data into intervals then once again um, label the horizontal axis um, uh, to conform to the interval selected then find the frequency of occurrences within um, each interval label the vertical axis um, then uh, plot the frequencies on the vertical axis if you consider um, a graph like this your histogram will be always uh, something like uh, similar to this where your horizontal axis it always represents the interval and the vertical axis it always represents what the frequencies so n histograms they are considered as a frequency distribution and uh, with respect to the histograms, uh, the number of uh, class intervals like this, okay, depends on the number of um, observations as well as the dispersion of the data. And um, it is always suggested the number of intervals to be considered as the square root of the sample size. Uh, sample size. This is one way of um, selecting the intervals to plot um, what that horizontal axis and once again um, uh, these histograms uh, can be uh, uh, represented for the continuous data as well as for um, discrete data for the continuous data these histograms they correspond to what the probability density function of a theoretical distribution and for um, the discrete data it corresponds to probability mass function because we are using distributions and the distributions are with both that is discrete as well as continuous when we take continuous it is always probability density function when we take um, discrete it is always uh, probability mass function if few data points are available uh, then uh, combine adjacent cells to eliminate what um, the une uneven appearance of the histogram uh, this is what like um, suppose whatever the input we have considered if the input uh, size is very low that is with only a few data points then combine the adjacent cells uh, to eliminate what the uneven appearance sum uh, of the histogram uh, this is just an example for the histogram uh, uh, histogram the same data with different interval size if you consider here it is the interval size between these is what that is two and this represents the frequency then if you consider here the interval is what it is always four if you consider here the interval is what seven and this represents what the frequencies um here is just an example uh, that they have considered here um, they have considered the vehicle fine or oh, the arriving of the vehicle it is always discrete fine so here is an example that is representing what um, uh, the histogram for the discrete data where we have the arrivals of period 0 1 2 3 up to 11 and the frequency that is 12 10 19 and so on so since these um, numbers are like 0 1 2 3 the frequency is considered with respect to what uh, that is interval is what that is one so fine so zero it is always what 12 so that is how it is plotted with respect to the frequencies so this is just an example for what uh, for your um, uh, this one now for uh, discrete data uh, in a similar way here is an example for um, the continuous data so this is an example for a live test uh, performed on what electronic component at 1.5 times the nominal voltage and their lifetime was recorded so it is nothing but um, on the component life the lifetime uh, between 0 to 3 it is half, what is the frequency that is 23 between 3 and 6 it is 10 between 6 less than um, and 8 it is 5 and so on for this uh, the plot uh, histogram is once again uh, then here so here you can see 0 to 3 the interval is what that is 3 3 to 6 the interval is 3 then once again 6 to 9 again 3 so here the interval that is considered is what tip life in days okay that is with respect to 
three days and the frequency is what once again 0 5 10 and so on so these frequencies are plotted and this is your histogram it is nothing but um, based on the histogram that is plotted suppose to consider here so whatever the graph like this you are going to get fine so based on this shape what we will be doing is we are going to consider the data and definitely when we use any of the distributions we will be getting um, okay um, a curves like this so based on the data whatever the curve we are going to consider so we are going to select what the distribution fine so that distribution is going to fit the data taking that distribution then what we will be doing we will estimate the parameters and we will just once again check for goodness for fitting the input and uh, these are some examples with respect to some um, uh, scenario for the sample size of uh, 10,000 and histograms have been written here. And for the histogram, this is just an example and that is how the histogram is uh, constructed. So moving to the next after histogram uh, or uh, once the uh, histogram is uh, uh, ready, then we'll be selecting what the family of uh, distribution selecting the family of distributions fine so the purpose of uh, preparing a histogram is to infer a known uh, probability density function or a probability mass function there are uh, literally hundreds of um, probability distributions that have been uh, created and many of these are created with some specific uh, physical uh, physical process in mind so one way of selecting the distribution is to use a physical basis of the distribution as a guide Fine. So, selecting the family of distribution once again, a family of distribution is selected based on always the context of the input variable, the type of input variable and shape of the histogram as I told. Okay, some histogram may have a shape like this, some histogram, okay, when you do it, they may have a shape like this. See, this is all your uh, histogram when you are writing here, it will be like this. So shape of this so based on this shape of the histogram we are going to once again a family of distribution is selected based on the shape and the input variable frequently encode distribution uh, the distributions that are very easily easy to analyze are exponential distribution normal and poisson process whereas uh, the difficult one to analyze is the beta gamma and label distribution then right? which will be having term mark once again these three are related then right? which we have a curve similar to this things now, as I told, um, one way of selecting the distribution, it is always based on the physical basis of uh, distribution as a guide. So these are the various types of distributions that are available, binomial, negative binomial distribution, Python, normal, uh, Babel, Erlang, uh, then empirical distribution and so on. Now, uh, coming to the first one, uh, the binomial distribution. So this binomial distribution, it models the number of successes in n trials. When the trials are independent with common success probability uh, if you want to take an example um, you can consider the number of um, de defective computer chips find in um, n number of chips that is what actually the binomial distribution suggests uh, moving on to the again second one the negative binomial or geometric distribution this models okay uh, the number of trials uh, required to achieve what k success um, uh, for example, the number of computer chips uh, that we must uh, inspect to find four defective chips. Next one is the Python process. So this models the number of um, independent events, uh, independent events um, that occur in a fixed amount of uh, time and space. Always this, this is with respect to what the time and space uh, example um, you can consider um, the number of customers arriving to the store during one hour that is with respect to what the time or the number of uh, defects found in um, 30 square meters of a sheet metal that is with respect to space the next one is a normal distribution so this models the distribution of a process that can be thought of what the sum of a number of component processes for example, um, uh, while assembling a product, uh, uh, the time to assemble a product is a tum, sum of time required to uh, required for each assembly operation. Uh, that is how uh, the normal distribution is considered. Next one is um, the long normal uh, distribution. This models the distribution of process that can be thought of a uh, that can be thought of as a product, um, a number of component processes. Um, example. Um, uh, you can consider the rate of return on an investment uh, where interest is compounded. Uh, next comes the exponential. 
models the time between what the independent events as well as the process time that is memoryless. Um, if you want to example uh, for this, the time between the arrivals from a large population of uh, potential customers who act independently of one another. It is always respect to the independent events. Uh, next comes with respect to variable distribution. Models the time of failure uh, for components. Example, um, the time to failure for disk drive. The exponential is specific uh, case of this exponential is this variable or uh, the exponential is a specific case of what the variable distribution next with uh, the continuous uh, or discrete um, uh, uniform uh, models completely uncertainty and um, uh, with respect to this uh, all outcomes are equally likely the distribution often is used uh, inappropriately when there is uh, no data uh, the next comes the triangular uh, models a process uh, for which only minimum or uh, most likely and maximum values of the distribution are known. For example, the minimum, most likely and maximum time required to test a product. Likewise, means with respect to the parameters. The last one is the empirical. Uh, so resamples from the actual data collected. So based on the physical basis of the distribution uh, and also with respect to what um, the input variable in the shape of the histogram, we are going to select what uh, the family of distribution, any one of them, this. Um, uh, next, moving to this, um, uh, always whenever we are selecting the family of distribution, we need to remember um, uh, that we should not um, ignore the physical characteristics of the process when selecting what the distribution okay so remember the physical uh, characteristic of the process has to be considered we cannot ignore it then um, is the process uh, natural discrete or valued even we need to consider this whether it is bounded or not we need to take into consideration we should also take into consideration um, um, with respect to the values whether it is only positive values or negative values or whether it is the interval negative to what the positive values and also keep in mind that there is no true distribution for any uh, stochastic um, input process and input model is approximation of uh, reality so the final goal is to what obtain approximation okay that yields useful that yields okay useful results from the simulation experiment it is always what the final goal is to what to obtain always what the good approximation Fine. So based on this, what we'll be doing is we'll be selecting what the family of distribution. Going to the next, uh, we have a type of plot that are called as quantile quantile plots. Fine. So uh, why this um, quantile quantile plots? When there is a small amount of data points, the histogram will be uneven. And uh, when it is uneven, the fit depends on actually the bits of the histogram intervals even if the intervals are chosen well grouping data into cells makes it difficult to compare a histogram to a continuously probability density so what we do is uh, we'll use a plot that is called as uh, quantile quantile graph plots which can also be represented as um, qq plot which is a useful tool for evaluating the distribution fit uh, one that does not suffer from any of the problems so QQ plot is useful for evaluating what the di evaluating distribution fit. Fine. Now, if X is a random variable with the cumulative distribution function F, fine. Then QQ, that is quantile quantile of X. X is what a random variable. Um, is that is the gamma such that F of gamma, that is cumulative distribution function, is always a probability of X, which is less than or equal to which value? That is with gamma value, which is equal to Q. And this Q value is between 0, what? Less than or equal to 1. When F as an inverse, okay, that is gamma is calculated with what? F inverse of what? This Q. Fine. So what is the procedure that has to be followed? Let, okay, this xi, there is i with 1, 2, 3 be a sample of data from what? The random variable. And what we do is order the observations from where? From smallest to the largest and denote this as yj where j is from 1 to n. Where this is what? This is ordering the data in which order? That is from smallest to the is, that is in ascending order. Fine where j is the ranking or the order number fine now the q to q plot okay that is quantile quantile plot is based on the fact that okay yj is an estimate of what 
j minus 0.1 or 0 0.5 divided by n quantile of x that is yj is approximately what f inverse of j minus okay 0 0.5 divided by n where this represents what that is q that is q now uh, whenever the plot of uh, yj versus so whenever we consider quantile quantile plots we always plot okay of yj okay that is these values which are in ascending order versus which one that is f inverse of j minus 0 0.5 divided by n where this n represents the number of samples fine if f that is capital f fine if f is a member of an appropriate family of distribution then the plot of y the plot of yj versus f inverse will be approximately what a straight line some of the points may not fit uh, to a straight line but it is approximately what a straight line and also if f has also appropriate uh, parameter values then the line will have a slope of what that is one fine now here just there is an example here uh, the example they have considered is uh, the door insulation times of a robot follows a normal distribution fine actually you can um, uh, check the actual input in the textbook and these are the values that are as arranged once again in ascending order there is nothing but it is with respect to yj okay the xj value is available in the textbook so considering that they are arranging these values in which order now ascending order this is 99.5 99.56 99.62 and um, so on so okay uh, taking these values they try to plot um, these values that is with respect to yj and followed by which one now that is f inverse fine the observations are ordered from the smallest to the largest yj are plotted um, versus what f inverse here the n value is what that is um, 20 so when you take up your textbook you can see the xj value they are given as 20 if i consider this as an example okay it is what n value is 50 okay you can go through the complete value in the textbook fine now after that whenever i consider where f has a normal distribution width okay the distribution they are selected fine after that is the sample of um, or the family of distribution they have selected is what the normal distribution for the normal distribution the sample mean is 99.9 uh, seconds and sample variance is 0 0.2832 square second so the order of observation or plotted was as f inverse sum for j equals to 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 15 i think uh, if you consider your textbook it is up to 20 um and um, which one uh, for j equals to 20 so that is how it is represented here you can see you have a straight line okay check whether the door insulation time follows the normal distribution straight line is there supporting the hypothesis of what the normal distribution once again you can also represent what okay the density function of the normal distribution right so this is how um, it is done it is always what some points fit to the straight line some does not fit but is always the straight line that we are going to consider now consider the following while evaluating the linearity of um, qq plot the observed values never fall exactly what on a straight line the ordered values are ranked and ends not independent unlikely for the points to be scattered about the line the variance of the extremes is higher than the middle so the linearity of the points in the middle of the plot is more important it is nothing but something like the linearity of the middle it is always considered as what the more important and um, the qq plots can also be used to check for what homogeneity it is nothing but it can be used to check whether single distribution can represent two sample sets okay single distribution whatever the family of distribution we have considered can represent two sample sets given two random variables x and uh, z plotting the ordered values of x and z against each other reveals approximately a straight line if x and z are well represented by the same distribution fine suppose if you draw a straight line also the values of x and y should be uh, well represented with the same distribution so this is what uh, is the advantage of what type of plots qq plots so identifying the distribution with data always um, uh, deals with um, uh, always deals with what um, um, uh, histogram selecting the family of distribution and uh, quantile quantile plots